for that because it's small enough that I feel like when you do something you can actually see the difference. I use film still. What I find that with digital you just kind of click, 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 click. And with the film it's kind of a little more of a meditation. You have to sit, you have to think about it. We're going up to Stone Fridge which is like they made Stonehenge out of a bunch of refrigerators. The official title is Stone Fridge, a Fridge Hinge. It's kind of a megalithic, post-apocalyptic monument to consumerism waste. It's kind of a black humor approach to what I think may be the downfall of civilization. I went to the city government of Santa Fe, and it became an absurd journey of bureaucracy. I had to go to the city manager, the public utilities committee, the art and public places committee, the public works department, the full city council, and eventually through the mayor. It took over a year and a half to get through all of this bureaucracy, a year and a half of dog and pony shows for every bureaucrat in the Santa Fe city government. The most vocal active opponent was one of the engineers. He told me, you may build this thing, but it'll just be bulldozed. And sure enough, a week after I got permission, workers in the city solid waste department destroyed my entire collection and claimed that it was an accident. The other thing he told me was, I think art is a painting you put on the wall and garbage is garbage. And what you are doing is garbage. My original proposal was to put it up for two weeks. Because of the censorship and the opposition and the wanton destruction, the project ended up going on for over 10 years. The more the government opposed it, the more they destroyed it, the more power they gave it. People started rooting for it just to defeat this bureaucratic idiocy. And the next thing I knew, there were three reporters calling around the city of Santa Fe, asking them, well, what do you mean you destroyed the project? Nothing succeeds like censorship. If something is important to you as an artist, you are going to need to persevere, and you may need to fight for it beyond your wildest dream. When I got to Santa Fe, at first I didn't feel comfortable because you said it was going to a country music house, something in a whole bunch of hunks and, uh, oops, I was going to say hunkies, but a whole bunch of uh, hillbillies. I always said I was racist, but it helped me get over my racism because um, it showed me that white people and people in general, they have love. The love from Santa Fe was so genuine that I was just like, you know what? People is just people and let people's actions dictate who they are. Do you still find a similar experience, maybe? After Santa Fe, yo, I built such a high tolerance for not just country music, but just the country in general. You know? People exhibited so much love, it was ridiculous. They didn't even hear our music before they started showing us love. They showed us love strictly from the people that we were and the energy that we showed them. This is a little something from your boy, K.P. <laughs> My flow is like a snake bite. Without anti-venom, they lethal. Distinguished, I'ma represent all of my people. When they finally heard our music, it was ridiculous. They was like, oh man, we oh, definitely have to work it. with you guys, you know what I mean? And you wouldn't get that everywhere, you know what I mean? You seriously wouldn't get that everywhere. Yo, this is how we do it. We rock all night from country to bluegrass, hip hop, it's all right. Yeah! 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 
It's very rock and roll to be to be anti-establishment. You never heard it like this. When we play like some of these redneck places down in Texas, we always get big cheers when we sing. I think anyone, whether or not you were for Bush or anything, you can relate to the fact that your money's worth less now, and that gas is over $3 a gallon, and that you're not making anymore, and that the oil companies are making so much, and that this whole war, you know, is just so much of what's going on is based around the war in the Middle East. Woo! Rainstorm in Texas, baby. Here's the map. I've been looking for that thing everywhere. And we headed just inside the state line, right there. I've gone back to Magna Carta because, uh, Man, they've forgotten it in the United States. I was taught that it was like a bourgeois document, but it had habeas corpus, prohibition of torture, due process of law, trial by jury. Bush must have had very bad English teachers and his uh, English history teachers, if he did any of it, because these have been violated lock, stock, and barrel, you know, by this emergency that the Bush regime has created. But do the death bad. In some ways, it's good that Bush is a miserable failure and disgusting human being and an appalling president. Do we want someone to do it slightly better, who's pursuing the same policies but looks a little more civilized when he goes in front of the UN? If we were pagans, barbarians, on the frontiers of the Roman Empire in the third century, you know, waiting to invade. We wouldn't have said, oh, they've picked Theodosius. He's an appalling, he'll be a very bad Roman emperor. That's terrible. No, you'd say they've picked another idiot. That's wonderful. We can invade even faster. In other words, if the prime force for evil in the, in the world is the American empire, which it is right now, you don't wish, you know, for have a slightly better guy at the tiller saying, you know, I'll steer the American empire to, you know, greater success. You want a pilot who's half drunk, who's steering the thing onto the rocks all the time. So that's what, the best thing that could happen is for the American empire to start to crumble. Of course, because then you would even up the balance in the world. I mean, at the moment, what it's- What about the American people? Would they, would they benefit from that as well? Well, they're not doing too well right now, are they? Now, I don't think you, when you go across America, ordinary people are telling you that life's looking like it did in the 1950s. One medical disaster and you're wiped out, you're gone, your history. You've lost your house, you've lost your car, you're gone. I mean, it's terrible. So is the American empire really delivering? You know, the Roman empire finally fell because people in it, what's called the marginal rate of return, they said there's nothing much in this for us. So what's the alternative? It sounds like there is none. What are you doing? You're going across the country, you're filming people, you know, we're actively involved in trying to bring art and politics together. What do I do? You know, we do our website, we do our newsletter. You do what you can. What's the tooth in big improvements since I've been here? You know, every day, we have better coffee and better bread. No politician gave them good coffee. Politicians f have fought valiantly on behalf of the food industry, saying Folgers is the outer limit of the American experience. Bread. When I first came to America, bread was something you'd use for insulation. In the windows, it was so disgusting. It's in the hands of the people. And if the government said we ban good coffee, the people would find a way of having good coffee.